And in this particular problem, we're going to have extra fun because we're going to be dealing with fractions and positive and negative numbers. And even more fun, we're not going to use our calculator. So you're definitely going to want to be extra careful here. And if you think you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. Now there's different approaches you can take to solve this problem, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the way I did it. Now again, you could have approached it differently. Uh, really what counts is whether you did this right or wrong. So here, notice we're dealing with some whole numbers or some integer values, seven, three, and uh, this right here, actually this minus 11, this really is a negative 11, just in case you didn't see that. But anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to group together all my little whole numbers here, or my integer values, and then we'll put our uh, fractions over here. Now we can do that uh, because remember in addition, that order doesn't make a difference. So we have one plus three plus seven. That's the same thing as three plus seven plus one. So we can uh, change the order and still end up with the right answer. That is a lovely property uh, of addition. Okay, but we have to be very careful here of these negative values, all right? So really, uh, probably the best approach uh, to kind of reorganize this problem is anytime you have the subtraction, like right here, you could be very explicit about it and be like plus negative 11. So this is a negative number and go plus negative, that's negative two fifths, all right? So just in case there's any uh, confusion about that, that's kind of the best way to approach it. But anyways, let's go ahead and pick it up, uh, pick up the problem at this stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the answer to this and then we'll deal with the fractions and then we'll combine these two answers together. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. Here we have seven plus three minus 11. Seven plus three is 10. 10 minus 11 is negative one. Again, you're gonna need to know some positive and negative number rules in order to do this problem. So 10 minus 11 is the same thing as 10 plus a negative 11, which of course is negative one. Now, anytime you don't understand something as I'm going through the solution, you should be making a little checklist. I don't get this, I don't get that, I don't get this. So these are the things you need to uh, work on, okay? So if you wanna improve in math, anytime you know you don't uh, know something, make a note of it and work on that very specific math skill, okay? That's how you, you can't just be like, oh, I need to improve in math, that's too broad. So you wanna just pick math skills and of course you wanna build up from the foundation skills up. Matter of fact, if you want a quick review of basic mathematics, elementary, middle school mathematics, fractions, positive, negative numbers, all that kind of good stuff, decimals, place values, check out my Math Foundations course. Uh, you can find it, again, in my Math Help program. All right, so let's go ahead and continue the problem. So 10, uh, 10 minus 11 is the same thing as 10 plus negative 11, that's negative one. So now what we need to do is figure out what uh, one third minus two fifths is equal to. So we get to deal with fractions now. All right, so here, uh, anytime you're trying to add or subtract fractions, you have to have those denominators the same. And you can see we do not have common denominators, so we have to find the common denominators. And again, this is going to be 15, okay? So, well, I didn't say, uh, I didn't tell you that the LCD was 15, but of course I wrote this, but here it is, the lowest common denominator is 15. Now, this is a critical part of your fraction knowledge. There's so much to cover in fractions. I'm not gonna get into how to find the LCD or how to add or subtract fractions. Again, these are big topics that you want to make sure you know how to, uh, to do, okay? Whether you are a math student or not, you just never know when you're gonna have to do arithmetic when you lose your cell phone or you don't have access to a calculator. You're gonna have to get that pencil and paper out and do some old school math. Okay, so let's go to continue on here. One third minus two fifths. So we're gonna have to convert or rewrite uh, these denominators so they're common. So they're gonna uh, both be 15. So how can I uh, make a three into a 15? Easy, just multiply by five. So I'm gonna have to multiply the numerator by five. So we have five fifteenths. And then here, how can I change a five to a 15? Just multiply by three. So I'm gonna have to multiply that numerator by three. So I got five fifteenths minus six fifteenths. So let's continue on here. 
And so anytime you have the same denominator when you're adding or subtracting fractions, all you need to do, let's go ahead and actually write it right here, is to simply add or subtract the respective numerators. In this case, it would be 5 minus 6 over 15. And 5 minus 6 is the same thing as 5 plus negative 6, which, of course, is negative 1 or negative 1 over 15. All right, so this is where the answer, or this is where our work is right here. Now, a lot of you that thought that you could just do this problem in a few steps, here's the thing. If you are trying to solve a math problem in the least steps possible that you need to write, you're almost guaranteed to get that problem incorrect. Make sure you're taking you know, uh, solving any problem one step at a time. You can take one or two steps, but don't try to take multiple steps and just go from here to here without writing all those steps in between because, again, you're going to have to see your work and check your work as you go. Now, at this point right here, now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube, and the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. You could easily, if you were aware of this, you could just add uh, this negative 1 and negative 1 15th. So if you gave your answer as negative 1 uh, and 1 15th, this mixed number right here, that's excellent. Okay, So that would be, of course, the mixed number equivalent of the improper fraction I gave you as the answer. But if, at this point, you could just write your answer this way and, and go from, you know, um, you know, you'd be done. So if you saw that opportunity right here, hopefully you did, this is the most effective way. But let's suppose... You were like, okay, I have negative 1 plus negative 1 15th. i got to add these up. So let's think of uh, negative 1 as a fraction. Anytime you want to think of a number as a fraction, just put it over 1. So if you have a number like, say, 3, and you're like, oh, where's the, I want to think of that as a fraction. Well, we'll just put it over 1. So 3 is a numerator, and 1 would be the denominator. So negative 1, uh, we can think of it as the fraction negative 1 over 1. So again, we have, we're back to Adding fractions, we have to consider what the uh, lowest common denominator is. Here, in this case, it's 15. So we're going to have to change this fraction here. So um, so its denominator is 15. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 15. And you have negative 15 over 15. All right, so we're adding fractions. Again, same denominator. So we're going to add the respective numerator. So negative 15 plus negative 1 is negative 16. So negative 16 over 15. Uh, now here... This, this tends to confuse students, okay? From this is the answer. This is a, the, these answers are equivalent, okay? So if you were ever wondering if negative 16 over 15, is that the same as negative uh, 16 over 15, and that, or is that the same as 16 over negative 15? All of these are equivalent, okay? So if you end up with a negative answer or a negative number in the numerator or the negative number in the denominator, your final answer, put that negative number here because a negative divided by positive or positive divided by negative, that whole thing uh, is negative, okay? But if you wrote this or this, okay, uh, your teacher should not deduct any points because they know what's going on, but you yourself need to know that, oh, these are all equivalent answers. Okay, so again... You know, you just never know when you need to, uh, you know, use your uh, arithmetic skills because you don't have a calculator. I can tell you right now, if you're trying to learn more advanced math, like algebra, you're going to have to be super strong in arithmetic, okay, which means you're going to have to do a lot of fraction problems, positive and negative uh, fractions, etc., without a calculator. It's critical that you understand how to find the LCD and all this other kind of good stuff. So a couple um, suggestions again. 
And if you're looking for a quick review, check out my Math Foundations course. It goes into all kinds of things like place value as well, percent. That's a really good little mini course. If you want something a little more thorough, then I want to check out like my pre-algebra course. But hopefully this little video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.